was the night before the playoffs, and even more Clippers Mavs conversation needs to be had with the latest with Kawhi Leonard status for game one. And what are the keys to beating the Dallas Mavericks? Gonna be talking about it all, just you and me on today's Locked On Playoff Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers. Your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darren Viziri, born and raised in LA and in my 19th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod and subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where I've been making playoff previews for every single series with fans of those teams. And Locked On Clippers is free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, where I want you to let me know if you think Kawhi Leonard is going to play game one game two what do you think the status is based on all the different reports you're hearing and i'll be telling you about everything that's been said up to this date with Kawhi leonard everything i've been told i'm just going to let it all out there at this point and then we're going to be talking about some of the keys the biggest things needed for the clippers to beat dallas because if you did not check out the two-part crossover with nick from locked on mavs please check it out two parts talking all things clippers and mavs and a bonus episode and look I saw some of the comments. There is clearly more optimism from his side than mine. And I think there's a couple of reasons to that. Before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. Uh, I would say bet on the Clippers. Why not? But here's the thing, right? Just to go back and address the some of the comments and most of them being made by stands, of course, because real Clipper fans know that we've been through so much that it's okay to be a little pessimistic or expecting the worst. Stands, they just got off their U-Haul trucks. They haven't even unpacked their bags. So obviously they're going to just hate on your boy. Here's the thing, right? The Dallas Mavericks are playing their best basketball of the season. They are peaking. They're basically having their stretch of what we had in December and January, right? Going into the season. Clippers sputtered a bit, kind of rebounded just a tad, but were without our best player like his status is up in the air and I've, I've been skeptical of this team from the beginning of the season as everybody that listens to the show knows in terms of winning the whole thing but the Kawhi stuff is relevant so of course he sounds a little bit more optimistic than I but that being said I still have the Clippers winning the series I still have Clippers in seven so let's talk about the specifics right this is going to be all about how we beat those guys how we beat those bozos the Mavs that are 0 2 against us in the playoffs. One person really said, I think this guy wants his team to lose, bro. Oh my God. That, that stuff is so funny to me. And you understand, I don't do this for the money. I don't do this for the money, believe it or not. I do this for the love of the team because you think it's easy with the Clippers and what they do to us as fans? It is not, but I love talking to you. So here we go. Ready? I want you to strap, as, as Ralph Lawler used to say, buckle up. We're going down to the wire here at Staples Center. But in this case, buckle up. Here we go. The Kawhi Leonard injury news saga. So let me just say this, right? About a week or so ago, I got a call from somebody that I trust, but that has not always been 100% right. And since I've heard from somebody that Kawhi might be out the first game, if not maybe the first two games. And I'm like, ugh, I don't want to believe that. I don't want to believe that. I just want to take it a day at a time. Each day, the Clippers have been so shady with the status we, like we expect him to play. We're playing under the assumption that he's going to play. But he is not fully participating in practice. He is just kind of watching, going through the walkthroughs of our sets and this and that, our schemes. But he's not playing full speed, which is extremely concerning. So the one thing that has to be thrown to the garbage, I don't want to hear anyone suggest this anymore, that the Clippers are doing this as gamesmanship, that they're load managing Kawhi Leonard, that this and that. This is a serious situation. Every single source has said that the knee inflammation, whether it be woes, whether it be shams, whether it be our own local media, whether it be what I'm hearing behind in my sources, and I don't have that many, (laughs) are all telling you that it's knee inflammation. You think the Clippers organization, after 68 games of Kawhi Leonard healthy and having played Paul George 74 games, are going to load manage for three weeks before the playoffs? That's a little extreme. 
especially when load management hasn't really been our MO this season with Kawhi. And that's what makes me feel so sorry for him because he's really not skipped any steps this year. We have seriously not skipped really any steps this year. We have taken the season seriously and we have gotten a top four seed in a gauntlet of a Western Conference. And here we are in a tough situation in the first round. And after the whole year of me knocking on wood the entire season saying that we're about to finally see Kawhi Leonard play in front of a sold out Clipper crowd, I have to give you a saga on what's going on here. I mean, this is just, <laughs> oh God, Clipper Nation. Like, why do we have to go through these things? Anyway, let's keep on going, right? So I'm under the assumption that like, I think he's gonna play. This is like, we're at Friday right now. Let's say we're at Wednesday when I'm telling this story on this timeline. I'm feeling like he's going to play. Then I hear on about Wednesday night, I think Wednesday was the day that we heard Chris Broussard come out and say that the swelling isn't going down, right? I heard from three different people, as I said on one of these episodes, three different people besides Broussard that the swelling isn't going down. What are we going to do? On that night, I saw someone say, or maybe it was that morning when I woke up, the first message I saw was that someone had told me that He's probably going to get shot up in injection and he's going to do whatever he can because we're, we're at a desperate, we're in a desperate situation. But that made me nervous hearing that because I was like, OK, if he gets a shot of some sort, because I've heard in the past that sometimes Kawhi probably does have to take shots. Well, I've heard that he does, but I'm telling you probably because I'm not confirming it because I've only heard it from one person. But I heard that Kawhi, you know, he does have to take injections sometimes. And I don't know if that's. It's completely rare. I don't think it is. If somebody has more medical expertise in the comments, you can let me know. But. I don't think that's completely rare with all the stuff he's had. So it's not crazy, but if he has to take those and it's the situation is this serious, even if he does play, how is he going to play and how is his knee going to respond to this shot or injection or whatever it may be? A couple hours after I received that message, Sham Sharania reported for The Athletic that Kawhi should be good to go and is going to probably take an injection or a shot, which caused mixed reaction from Clifford fans. Everybody was like, okay, he's going to give it a shot, but that sounds like it's serious, right? Going to sleep on Thursday night, I'm thinking he's going to play because of that shot, that shot news. I wake up on Friday and Skip Bayless says he's probably going to miss game one and game two is uncertain. And now I see my entire timeline talking about Skip Bayless is never wrong when it comes to Kawhi. And I'm not sure about that. I, I feel like I could have sworn Skip Bayless was not 100% right on something with Kawhi in the past. But again, I never trust just one source. I just don't. Then Law Murray from The Athletic, our beat writer, who will probably be joining us very soon on the show, I'd assume, said that he's under the assumption that he's not going to play game one. And then... Another person told me that he's probably not going to play game one. And then another person told me he's probably not going to play game one. And then game two's up in the air. So that's where I'm at as I'm recording this. I, I think it's 65% he doesn't play, 35 he does. What does that mean? Well, let's look at the positive first. It means that Paul George, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, and Zubats are going to have to step up. Everyone, but mainly. I, I, mainly the three guys, the three future Hall of Famers. Paul George, James Harden, and Russ. Russ, I know what he's capable of. The Energizer Bunny, he's going to get more minutes. He's going to have to probably guard Luka, go at, guard Luka at times, go at weaker defenders, and put pressure on the rim. Remember what Nick Angstadt said on the preview? He said the Mavs struggle with pace. They're transition D. Russell Westbrook, if you want to play at a faster pace, he might unlock some keys. Um, or might have the keys to unlock some doors, I should say. Zubats, you know, I watched the Kings play the Mavs a couple weeks ago, and despite the fact that Daniel Gafford was protecting the rim better than they've had anybody protect the rim in the Luka era, Sabonis was still scoring on him over the top in the low post. So if we can get Zubats the ball in the low post to test Daniel Gafford defensively one-on-one, -on -one, that's something I didn't really talk about in the previews, we should. And now with Kawhi out, we're going to have to look at Zubats, who's been playing some of the best basketball of his season the last couple of weeks, part of the reason why we rebounded, Throwing the ball. 
Then there's Paul George, who's going to have to be our number one scorer, is going to have to transform into that 2021 Paul George. And the key to that is him being aggressive, not settling for jumpers, constantly going to the rim, right? If you don't have Kawhi Leonard, that gives Derek Jones Jr. the opportunity to guard James Harden at the point of attack to try to be, because he's their best point of attack guy, right? Okay, fine. That might nullify James Harden. So now you're putting P.J. Washington on Paul George. P.J. Washington might be a better matchup for Kawhi because he's a little sturdier, but P.G.'s a little quicker. And P.J. Washington's weakness is, I know he's played really good defense, but I would assume that his weakness from watching him play in the past is that he's not the best laterally, but he's strong. P.G. should be shifty enough to mix him just a bit, get to the basket, and we can see what we can do. So maybe that's advantageous for us matchup-wise. Even though James Harden might begin not have the mismatch anymore, now Paul George might have a favorable matchup. But it's not ideal to have Kawhi at all. James Harden, though, without Joel Embiid against Boston last year in the first game of the playoffs, had 45 points, which is his career high in the playoffs. The question is, can he duplicate that? I don't know, but we're going to need him to be amazing, quite frankly. We are going to need him to be amazing, both of them. There's no really other way to put it. But I'll say this. No matter what, not having Kawhi Leonard in the first game of the playoffs is extremely disappointing, and it's not ideal in any way. But yeah, it was 45 points. We haven't looked great without Kawhi. We've won a couple of games lately without him. But this is a really good Dallas Maverick team, and we'll just have to see how it goes. It, it's not ideal in any way, but if we can win one game without him, or even the first game without him, God, imagine the atmosphere in a game two with Kawhi coming back, playing his first game in front of a sold-out Clipper playoff crowd for the first time in his Clipper tenure. We're up one nothing. I mean, it's going to be, like, insane, like Willis Reed coming out of the tunnel. <laughs> but anyway, coming up, going to talk about more about the keys how we can beat the Mavericks, assuming that Kawhi Leonard will be playing, okay? What are some things we need, the most important things we need to beat these guys for a third time? Going to be talking about that coming up. I got to tell you a little something about Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? With Yahoo Finance, you can consolidate your views from multiple accounts in one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. Let's get straight to the point. You want to grow your portfolio to deal with the rising cost of inflation, pay off your debt or your mortgage, pretty much anything standing in the way of you and financial freedom, right? With Yahoo Finance, you can get access to the news, data, and tools that you need in order to help reach that financial freedom. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and data you need in one place. They're the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Dot com. That's yahoofinance.com. This episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. And I'm talking betting on the Clippers. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, back here to talk Clippers Mavs. And in my opinion, let's just analyze this under the assumption that Kawhi Leonard's going to play, right? Every game. My biggest key for the series is James Harden. Uh, point blank. He's the big question mark in terms of the Clipper players. Everyone talking about his postseason reputation. He's fallen short a couple of times. And I have said, though, and it is a fact, that he's won seven straight first-round series. But he has not played a first-round team like this. The Russell Westbrook Thunder without Paul George 
is nothing as close to this Dallas Maverick team. The Utah Jazz with Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, that is not like Luka and Kyrie Irving. So, Plant and that OKC team with young SGA and CP3 and Dennis Schroeder and Gallo, that, that's not much of a dangerous thing anyway either. Not much of a dangerous team there. So, this is the first time in, he's in the first round. It's a real 50-50 kind of series So in a while. But here's the thing. As I mentioned in the first segment, if, if Kawhi Leonard is playing, P.J. Washington will likely be guarding him as the primary guy. Derek Jones Jr. then takes Paul George. James Harden is being guarded by Kyrie. That has to be where we look to exploit them a lot because Kyrie Irving is also their second ball handler, creator, shot maker, shot taker, second best player. So you want to make him work defensively as is. The fact that he's going to be guarding James Harden, and I know he's improved defensively, but if you're like even if you're a Mavs fan, you're going to say, oh, well, you know, you'll see what well, Kyrie's been playing D this year. I mean, if you were put in my shoes, in the Clippers' shoes, how can you not think that that's a favorable matchup, right? So James Harden's going to have to go at Kyrie. He's going to have to get a little physical, put him at the point of attack and make him guard, and see what Daniel Gafford does playing against a James Harden Zubats pick and roll for the first time. I mean, Daniel Gafford played in one playoff series in his career uh, with the Washington Wizards and, and without fans really even there in full capacity and lost in five games with the Sixers. So... Let's see how he does when everyone's watching. I mean, no one has mentioned Daniel Gafford in any significant sort of game of any sort thus far in his career. Not to say that he might not have an incredible series. Maybe this is the coming out party for Gafford. But we got to make him prove it, right? So, and especially with Derek Lively not playing, when Gafford goes to the bench and they have Kleba at the five, it'll be interesting to see how much they switch. But if they're willing to switch Kleba onto Harden, then James has to take advantage. So a lot of this is going to come down to making, as Nick said, one of the weaknesses, the Mavericks defense play catch up, get them in rotation. How does that happen? By getting James Harden in the pick and roll, making the defense have to shift and rotate, and now the ball's moving, Clippers are getting open threes, we're fourth in the league in three-point percentage, we run it up, and we expose that the Dallas Mavericks defense was overrated, and they were beating weak opposition. <laughs> I'm obviously exaggerating, you gotta beat who's in front of you, but again, I'm gonna reveal this stat for all of you. The Dallas Mavericks were 22-7 and seven since getting Daniel Gafford, right? It's either 21 and 7 or 22 and 7 if I'm not mistaken. Now, of those teams, of those teams, wow, I feel like I just lost my notes on the series, unfortunately. Okay. I don't know if I have those numbers up with how, what their record is with, with uh Daniel Gafford, but I will say this, right? The Clippers are fourth in three-point percentage, 21st in attempts. So we don't shoot too many threes. Dallas is 12th in three-point percentage and second in attempts. So they will still get up threes, even though they're not as much of a three-point shooting team since they made the moves. They have more athleticism and toughness and size now. But I still think they'll shoot more threes than the Clippers. And I think that's one of the reasons why we do have a great three-point percentage is that we take the right ones and we're selective with it. We still have mid-range snipers in Kawhi Leonard and... Paul George and Russell Westbrook and Norman Powell, they still like to get downhill. But yeah, the, the, the Dallas Mavericks, they're obviously playing really good defense since they got Daniel Gafford, PJ Washington. But again, they've only played five playoff teams. It was either five or six playoff teams in that stretch with Gafford, right? And when I say playoff, I mean that they were a top 16. They didn't have to participate in the play-in. And they were only one in four or one in five. It was either one of those two records in those games with their only win coming against Denver when Kyrie made that left handed game winner. And then against playing teams, and you include playing teams, they were 12 and seven. So a lot of those playing teams, I'm not trying to devalue those wins, but they're playing teams. They're not the Clippers, is my point. So, okay, they're one of the hottest teams in the league. Let me tell you this right now we have a better record, we have home court advantage, and it's 0 0 on Sunday. So may the best team win. And I want to say may the best team win, but without Kawhi, it's like not a true accurate representation of our team. But the key to me, again, James Harden, more than anything, you got to test Kyrie. You got to test Luka. If Luka's going to switch on to Harden, please, let's go at Luka. 
You know, you got to make him work. And the big thing with James, he's got to be willing to take that catch and shoot three. We throw the ball to Paul George, they double one pass away. He's got to let it fly. Doesn't stop with that rhythm dribble or hesitation to get the defense back to recover. You got to let it fly. And take the damn floater and embrace the in-between game. I know it's in the scouting report probably to make James Harden in the in-between game, but part of it's because he's not always comfortable with it. He's got to be like, look, I got to get whatever shot I can get. And I think he started to do that just a little bit more as the season wound down without Kawhi. Because it forced him to be more aggressive. So James Harden, it's going to be a huge series for him. His first series as a Clipper. Let's see how he responds in front of the home fans on Sunday. But coming up, going to be talking about what I think is the most important thing for the Clippers. And I'm going to talk about the defensive side of things as well. So many good things to talk about in, I wouldn't say so little time. We've had the whole week, but it's like, can you ever stop talking about a series this intriguing? Let's talk about it more coming up. I got to tell you a little something about LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. I've never gotten, I've never hired somebody on LinkedIn, but I've gotten a job off of LinkedIn, so I highly recommend. And LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Just post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. Clippers, Mavs set to go on Sunday at the Staples Center. I will be in the building, baby, and I cannot wait to be back on a playoff game. And let's, you know, let's do the sentimental playoff stuff at the end. So, one of the biggest things, I guess, we'll start with the defense first. My biggest thing defensively is Ty Lu. What matchups is he going to be willing? Which guys he's going to be letting to switch onto Kyrie and Luca is what I'm worried about. Is James Harden going to be guarding Luka and Kyrie? Can he hold his own against Luka? Because Luka technically is not the quickest, and James Harden's weakness is lateral movement. So can he stay in front? Because Luka likes to body guys. James Harden's a you know, big body. Can't really body him like that. And he's got great hands. He's held his own defensively on Luka on some possessions this season. But what will, ha- what will happen in the playoffs? And James has not looked good defensively over the last month or two, to be honest. As far as what I think... If it were up to me, I wouldn't have James Harden or Norman Powell guard Kyrie or Luka at any point. And and same with Zoo. I would not. Now, here's what I will say, though. When Luka's out and when Kyrie's out, I would blitz. I would blitz the pick and roll. Get the ball out of their hands and make P.J. Washington, Tim Hardaway, Derek Jones, and Exum make threes. That's, that's going to be the key. Make those other guys make shots. Because that's where we really have the massive advantage. Norm Powell, Russell Westbrook, Amir, Terrence. Like... Terrence Mann, we're talking about James Harden letting the three fly. Terrence Mann can't be on that hesitation stuff, hesitant stuff. He's got to let that thing fly. I'm so tired of that. He's been shooting so well in 2024. He's got to let it fly, let them close out hard, and that's when we get Terrence going downhill making plays. So that's one of my keys as well. If we can get stops, it would still be good to look to push in transition, especially if Kawhi's not playing. James Harden can throw those hit-ahead passes, and then we get Paul George getting downhill, Norman Powell, Terrence Mann, Amir Coffey, some of our better transition guys, and, of course, Russell Westbrook, and we can change the game a bit. So that'll be interesting. Now, when Tice is in, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing if he can switch on a Luka in certain situations. I'm dead serious. Just see what he can do. See what he can do because Tice... I think it's a much better series for Tice, especially if they got Maxi Kleba playing small ball five. We can play Tice against him. Get a little German versus German action. So I'm all for it. My big key with defense is, yeah, being selective with the switching and not being opposed to Zubot's blitzing. Because here's the thing. When Kyrie's in, okay, a little sus. We can try drop coverage. But drop coverage against Luka doesn't work too well because you're essentially allowing him to get in the paint or to the mid-range. And he does so good. Such a good job of putting the defender in jail and keeping them behind him and just weaving his way to the basket, snaking the pick and roll and doing all that. So 
It's always risky with drop coverage on Luka, but that is what Zoo has done all season. So it'll be interesting to see the scheme from Ty. Another thing we got to do throughout the series is if Kawhi is healthy, he's got to guard Luka sometimes, especially towards the end of games. Same with Paul. And I assume that Paul will be guarding Kyrie Irving for a large majority, but that's what makes this game upcoming questionable, right? If we don't have Kawhi, I say we start Amir Coffey and put Terrence on one of them. But probably put Amir on Luka because statistically this season, Amir Coffey has held Luka to the lowest field goal percentage of any Clipper one-on-one. Have Amir guard Luka and Terrence on Kyrie and then see how it goes. And then switch. If they put Paul George in the action, switch Paul George onto them. But don't switch Harden or Zoo onto them. That would be my game plan. But then offensively, and this is a whole theme for the series, attack their weak links. Every possession counts in the playoffs. Make Luka and Kyrie guard the point of attack. If you're not trying to get them involved, then you're probably wasting a possession, to be honest. Get them in the action and get to that stuff quick. James Harden can't walk the ball up the floor. Ten seconds gone by the shot clock. Put somebody in the action to get the switch, and now you're putting him in the pick and roll. Now you're already at four on the shot clock, and if you kick it out, that guy you throw the ball to has to shoot the ball or make a decision quick, and he might not get a good shot off in four seconds. So that's going to be the key is attacking those weak links. If they're going to switch Kyrie Irving and Luka on a Kawhi or Paul, time to go to work. Time to go to work. And I would like to see elbow P in this series. Catch the ball at the elbow. Don't make things too complicated. And also, don't just turn and shoot. Sometimes engage in trying to rip through and go by when you catch the ball at the elbow. Because one or two dribbles, that's the whole beauty of catching it there. You're already in the paint, which is what we want. So attacking weak links is, to me, massive in this series. Absolutely massive. When Tim Hardaway's on the court, he should also get thrown in the action. Because one of my reasons why I think the Dallas Mavericks did better in 2022 is that Tim Hardaway was injured. And I have no disrespect to Tim Hardaway Jr. He's actually made a solid career out of himself. But he's struggling. Let's play him off the floor. All right, guys. Time for the sentimental. Um, This is very frustrating that after five years, we still haven't seen Kawhi Leonard play a game in front of a sold-out Clipper playoff crowd. Now, partially, that's thanks to COVID. Secondly, terrible bad luck with Kawhi's injuries. And now it's just like, is this going to happen? Like, is this going to happen? I really hope it does. It's just so unfair to the most loyal fans in the league. And it sucks for Kawhi as well. But he has two rings. We have nothing. We don't even have a championship appearance. So I just feel so bad for the fans, man. I love all you. You're the best. Clipper fans. The real Clipper fans are going to stay through thick and thin. I really love you guys, man. What else was I going to say? Oh, so if you're at the game, right, you got to make all the noise you can make. Regardless of what toys they hand out, LED wristbands, the noisemaker fans, I have not heard a Clipper playoff game quite like 2015 and prior in a while. I think we've gotten so complacent with making the playoffs. There's going to be a lot of Luka fanboys in the building and Laker fans probably coming to infiltrate and root for Luka. So we're going to need every single Clipper fan to be as loud as possible. If you're at the game and you have not and your voice does not sound any different after, then you are failing, in my opinion. You are not doing your part. I'm so tired of people saying the Clipper crowd wasn't good enough. Oh, the Clipper fans are weak. Look, this is our last season in this big stadium with three levels of suites where the sound travels and it was built for hockey, right? So the stadium is, is a beautifully aesthetically pleasing stadium in my opinion. Outside, as you can see in my thumb and my background on YouTube right now, and inside I think it's very pretty, right? It is in need of a refurbishing though. But the sound, the atmosphere rarely does the stadium justice. Rarely does the event justice because it's it's there's so many levels of suites. The three under section is so high and so separated from the lower bowl. The sound just travels, right? But especially if you're in the lower bowl on Saturdays, everybody or Sunday, everybody thinks when they're in the lower bowl at Clipper games, you can't make noise. Everyone's got to get into the action. Everyone's got to be loud. We got to make Luca feel the difference between cardboard cutouts and Clipper Nation in full. Put that shirt on. Don't be so arrogant and think you're too good to wear a playoff shirt. And don't be too cool to cheer where you're just clapping the things on the defense chance. Get loud. Get loud. Come on. I'm challenging everybody listening here. 2015, 2014, those kind of vibes are needed in Staples Center, in the Crypto.com arena. I do not want to hear, you know, 2016, 2017, complacency, and last season was pretty good, but still not quite good enough for me. 2021 West Conference Finals, it was not full, full capacity, still not quite good enough for me. And when I say for me, I'm comparing us to us, to comparing us to Lob City, pre-2016. 
we still had a little more fire as a fan base in the playoffs. So again, I just want to say this, like, this is a blessing. You just remember where we came from. I know Clipper fans, a lot of them are newer, but remember where we came from. It's not guaranteed you're going to be in the playoffs every year. We've been in the playoffs now for 11 of the last 13 years, and that's something you should not take for granted considering where we've come from as a franchise. Enjoy it. Take it all in. Try to get tickets to the game because they're some of the most affordable in the league. And bring it, man. And let's let's enjoy this time together. As at the end of the day, we're in the playoffs, and everyone's gonna be watching Clippers basketball. And before, it just used to be special when we had so many eyes watching Clippers basketball. So, James Harden playing a playoff game, and is you know adding to his legacy as a as a bas- as a Hall of Famer for the Clippers it's gonna be crazy. Paul George, and one thing we know for sure is that Paul George is gonna play, and we haven't seen him play a game in front of a Clippers sold out crowd since Game Six in 2021. I mean, that's gonna be awesome. We didn't see him in the playing game against New Orleans two years ago. Didn't see him last year. It's gonna be great to see the guy that you know led us to break the curse, that second round curse, playing in front of us again, and then Russell Westbrook playing in front of the fans. He was electric last year, and now he's got Paul with him and Harden. Should be fun. And by the way, if you're at the game and you want to meet me. After the game, I will be doing my post-game interviews for my vlog across the street from the Kareem statue, right to the left of the Tom's entrance. You should not be able to miss me. I will be there. There will be a mic in my hand, and there will probably be some people around. So I will get all your thoughts. If you want to be interviewed after the game and share your raw emotions, your raw reaction, by all means, please come find me, and we can chat it up. Even if you don't want to be on video, come say hi. I'll be there at the latest 10 minutes after the buzzer. After the buzzer. I don't run out of there. I take it all in when I go to a game. Ten minutes after, latest, I should be there. So, check me out. It, this is it, guys. There can only be one. We waited all year for this. This is my second year as host and second year doing playoff content. Year five of the 213 era. Cross your fingers and hope Kawhi's plan. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, where content's coming out like every couple hours previewing every series with authentic fans of the teams. Check it out. And, of course, this channel, Locked On Clippers. Subscribe. Hit the notification bell. This is where it's going to get good. Check out the, the preview two-parter with Nick Engstead of Locked On Mavs as well if you haven't. And here we go. Talk to you guys Sunday night. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers, baby! Playoff time! I am so ready. Let's go Clippers!